Hello, I have a very important announcement. The meaning and purpose of life has finally been discovered, theoretically speaking. Before I can tell you what it is, let me explain to you my definition of the word meaning and its nature. The nature of meaning comes from the relationship between at least two components. For example, the meaning of a pen is based on its relationship with paper, where studying such a relationship can reveal its purpose as an instrument for writing to represent information. If the pen only exists on its own, without the connection to the paper, it would lack a relationship with another component in order to logically hold meaning and purpose. In case if you are wondering why meaning has to require at least two components for it to exist, this is because a component requires reaction with at least one other substantial component in order to bring out its own properties. That is actually what we refer to as the meaning of something. The meaning of something is about what a component has got to do with another component. It is also found between both components in a two-way reaction known as an interaction between both components. If there is more than interaction happening between the two components, then more meaning can be perceived. For an example, even the meaning of a word involves two components, not one. The word cake involves the component of 2D word itself, and the perceived actual 3D K component idea existing in our minds or in real life. If there is only one component of the word cake, we would only perceive the letterings without making a connecting relationship to the actual cake. Such an experience would have a very little or no actual perceived meaning. If we only perceive the letters of an unknown foreign language without being able to connect them to their represented ideas, we would not be able to perceive their meanings at all. An intended meaning would mean that a reaction of a one component to another component was intended, as seen in the cause and effect process of method acting between the actors. The resulting interaction between the actors would hold the intended meaning. The purpose of something is what a function in one component would generate in another component state, which can include a present time location component with a future time location component. The indeed purpose of methods acting is for the actors to hold a function to react to another actor in order to generate an intended final product. A one-way reaction of a component to another component would still be a valid condition for the intended meaning and purpose to exist. For an example, I currently react to a future goal that I hold the intention to fulfill, such as an intention to prepare dinner later in the day to produce a final product, that is, dinner. So now I go to the supermarket to buy some food for cooking my dinner. My reaction to the dinner component creates the connecting relationship between me and doing the things to prepare dinner and holds the meaning quality. The purpose of such a task is found where I fulfill the intended function, to generate a final intended product that is, the food for dinner. The meaning of something is related to its very fundamental nature, innermost core properties and true identity. Such can only be brought out and observed when one component reacts or interacts with another component. Such is the fundamental methodology, a scientific method. Knowing the meaning of life is done by observing its interactions with another related similar level substantial component. Its function or purpose can be recognized by identifying its intrinsic mechanism and tracking the production of any product, whether physical or non-physical. When we want to know about the meaning of life, we have to find the right components to deduce the possible answer. Many people use the component of their life consciousness and observe its reaction with the component of this reality, which would only bring out the answer of an experience. To properly deduce the meaning of life, we actually have to select the correct components. Our life consciousness with this reality is actually within one component itself, and our life consciousness within a different time location, that is, the afterlife reality, is another related component. When we ask the question of the meaning of life, we are asking to perceive the relationship between the component of our life consciousness in this current reality with another component where our life consciousness is in a different reality in a future afterlife location reality. When we ask about the purpose of life, we want to know what the function that our consciousness presence in this reality could generate, what kind of product in the future afterlife location reality. The actual wording of the ultimate question is actually 
the following. If my consciousness has an intended relationship with this reality, an afterlife reality, then what is this relationship's intended function, an intended product to be produced for my consciousness to take it into the afterlife reality? What is the definition of life? Life is based on consciousness or awareness. Our consciousness existing in this reality is one component, and our consciousness possibly existing in an after reality or afterlife is another component. Therefore, the meaning of life existing in this reality is based on the relationship between our consciousness existing in this reality. With our consciousness existing in the after reality, or some call it the afterlife. If there is no component of the after reality or afterlife, there cannot logically, technically, and theoretically exist any relationship to hold any possible meaning and purpose of life. So, what can connect these two components to form a meaningful relationship? The possible continence and transportation of our consciousness to the afterlife component. Logically speaking, the meaning of life can only exist and be found in such a relationship between these two components. If there is no continuation of consciousness and its transportation into the afterlife, there cannot logically, theoretically, and technically exist any possible meaning of life. So the possible probable and theoretical meaning of life has actually been theorized in many logical conclusions. So what is the purpose between the existence of consciousness in this reality and its continuance and transportation into an after reality or after life? Theoretically and logically speaking, the purpose can only exist within changes in consciousness form. So what kind of changes in consciousness world would make it worthwhile for our consciousness to exist in this reality and to experience it. My research has identified a very distinct and huge mechanism laid over all aspects of this reality for forming consciousness pathways to alter and change consciousness. So, who am I? Let me introduce myself. My name is Timothy. I come from the tropical island of Singapore. I have been researching the nature of consciousness for over 20 years, and I have realized from my research that consciousness development has the highest probability to be the actual purpose of life. So what is this distinct and huge mechanism lay over all aspects of this reality for constructing consciousness pathways, negatively and positively? Negatively as we know it, it is based on subjective incompatibility that can contract and focus our consciousness. Positivity as we know it is based on a subjective compatibility that can expand and stretch our consciousness. These two abundant qualities in our reality, when working in proper harmony, can contract and stretch our consciousness to form an intricate network of consciousness pathways for laying and supporting our thought processes. When such consciousness pathways are developed or trained into an autonomic advanced thought structure, it allows for enhanced consciousness awareness and thought process to be possible. Our negative and positive experiences in this reality are just tools from the huge mechanism to contract and expand our consciousness in order to develop it. I have discovered that the huge mechanism also involves different types of people. There are negativity givers that are people with negative childhoods who are often cynical, self-centered, like to displace their negativity or incompatibility onto others, and overly focused on survival due to their severely contracted consciousness. Then there are supporters who have positive childhoods, have positive supporting parents, and many supportive friends who utilize positivity or compatibility from their stretched expanded consciousness in order to support other people in the society. Negativity givers do not have the expanded range of consciousness like supporters, and supporters do not have the contracted focus of consciousness like negativity givers. And then there are the consciousness developers 
who are like uh, the middle child in between the other negativity givers and supporters. They have the potential to utilize qualities from negativity givers and supporters to contract and stretch their consciousness to develop evolved consciousness pathways. Consciousness developers often don't get much publicity on the news, but are the ones holding consciousness to be developed in this reality. The development of consciousness that involves contracting consciousness explains the presence of countless negative people and crimes in this reality, and also explains the presence of countless positive people in this reality to stretch and expand consciousness. There are also people with dual roles such as negative abusive parents who motivate their children to think for themselves and strive for freedom, and also disabled children who produce negative incompatible experiences for their parents, relatives, and acquaintances to develop their consciousness while also being a supporter to motivate them to perceive the big picture and live life with a purpose. Another example of people with dual roles are consciousness developers who have undergone negative childhoods and later on become supporters for many people in the society. Many famous personalities have such dual roles including the survivors of World War II Nazi concentration camps. My research has indicated that some consciousness developers would have received too much negativity and contraction in consciousness that have led to them taking their own lives or caused them to become like negativity givers. My research has indicated that the phenomenon of near-death experiences is such a process to rectify the excess consciousness contraction in such occurrences, where their consciousness leave their human bodies and undergo a life review process for the human characters to reflect on their negativity in order to stop further consciousness contraction and to begin the process to connect and stretch consciousness to develop consciousness pathways. Such a process often involves the experience of so-called unconditional love. Being kind to people and treating everyone with equal consideration is not the ultimate goal. Developing equal focus and intensity in consciousness pathways is, and many near-death experiences have reported that they are sent back to this reality against their will to do certain work. It is the negativity in this reality where it can contract and focus consciousness, which is its useful quality for being present. The development of consciousness in this reality could theoretically allow for our consciousness in the future to experience or create very complicated realities in the afterlife. Our presence in this reality might just be to undergo a form of training or molding of our consciousness to take on future complicated tasks in the after reality or afterlife. Such a molding process could explain our experience of linear time because thought process requires lengthy and connected linear thought sequences, whereas simple experiences do not require such lengthy linear experiences of time. There is a higher probability for our purpose of life to involve consciousness development compared to simply experiencing reality. I have theorized that a dramatic extreme change and evolution in our state of consciousness is a very worthwhile and purposeful reason for our initial consciousness body or soul to undergo the extreme experiences found in this reality. Why else would any consciousness body or soul possibly come to this reality to undergo various torture and suffering? My 20 year research and consciousness development has discovered over 20 highly important, effective, and precise instructions for developing advanced consciousness pathways, and I am still continuing my research to discover more instructions to do so. If you can understand and believe in my explanation of the meaning of life and our purpose in this reality, I welcome you to take on my personalized one-to-one -one course in understanding and fulfilling the purpose of life. Prices for my course start from 1.1 million Singapore dollars to 3.3 million Singapore dollars after factoring in a 90% discount. If you have a supporter or negativity giver role, you can take on one of my courses solely to understand the nature of this reality and the meaning and purpose of life in a greater detail. The price for this course is 1.1 million Singapore dollars. If you are a consciousness developer, you have the most complicated experiences among 
the three main types of role in this reality, you would require to understand the nature of this reality and meaning and purpose of life in great detail. Learn how to properly contract your consciousness and also rebound from a contracted consciousness to stretch and develop consciousness pathways. The price for this most complicated, personalized, one-to-one -one course is 3.3 million Singapore dollars. After factoring in a 90% discount, the license to use and distribute my entire research to anyone is up for a sale at 2.2 billion Singapore dollars, also after factoring in a 90% discount. Such a price allows for supporters to crowdfund and fulfill their supporting role. I do not wish to do everything and steal away their fundamental purpose of life. I am probably the most and only qualified person in this reality to help you fulfill the purpose of life. With 20 over years of research expertise, a miss is as good as a mile. We would not wish to fall short in our purpose and come back to this reality again. For further inquiries or to take on my course, you can contact me through my email address at timothyleeconsulting at gmail.com. Do check out this video's description section for a link to download a free book where I mention briefly about my research.